OCO. So it's wonderful to be with you all today from occupied Piscataway land known as Washington, D.C. Since I don't have much time, I'm just going to dive right in. So it's really important when discussing and analyzing data on Native people that per capita is really kept in mind. Um, Pre-COVID, we represented less than 2% of the total population in the so-called U.S. So when I say things like Native people have the highest rates, da, 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 that means based upon our total population within the U.S. total population. I, I hope that that was clear. Um, so with that said, just about everything I'm going to talk about today, Native people are on the worst end of. So those of us who are considered American Indian and Alaskan Native have the highest rates of disabilities and illnesses, many of which are preventable. We also suffer from some of the highest rates of poverty, incarceration, police brutality, suicide, rape, trafficking, and murder. Many of us are also without the infrastructure and services that others in this country enjoy, such as transportation infrastructure. So this goes for both our rural and our urban relatives. So urban natives represent 71% of the native population, and while services may exist within an urban area, but due to the poverty that so many of us experience, we don't have many of the advantages of urban life. Transportation and related infrastructure access are horribly low for us, yet we're policed at high numbers in these situations. Native people are more likely to be killed by police than any other group, including Black people. Analysis of CDC data from 1999 to 2014 shows that we are 3.1 times more likely to be killed by police than white Americans. And these numbers vary greatly across the country. In what is considered the ninth Federal Reserve District, which includes states from the upper Midwest, Native men had 14 times as many fatal encounters with police as white men, and Native women had 38 times as many fatal encounters as white women, making Native women the highest population in the so-called U.S. to suffer murder by police. In Minneapolis, police often stop Native people, particularly women, for being suspicious persons in areas with higher Native populations and sex work activity. So it's important to bear in mind that every year one in three Native women will be abused and that at least 84.3% of us have experienced violence in our lifetimes. The data on violence against Native to LGBTQIA plus people is scarce but often reflects higher rates of victimization than that of our cis native relatives. So the American Indian movement was founded in Minneapolis in the 70s due to the police brutality native people were suffering. And so I, I mentioned that because that's important to our present day. So in 2011, Derek Chauvin, who murdered George Floyd, was involved in the shooting of an unarmed Alaska native man, Leroy Martinez, in the Little Earth community of Minneapolis. If Native people mattered, then at the very least, officers such as Chauvin wouldn't have still been on the job, and countless BIPOC, deaf, disabled, ill, and two LGBTQIA people would still be alive today and would be less traumatized and with better health. You know, these murders of Native people goes almost entirely underreported by media. It's ignored by the U.S. government from the top down and many advocacy organizations and grassroots efforts to defund the police have often ignored these realities. I don't say this to undermine the pain and marginalization of other communities suffering from police violence, but rather as a reminder that this is still our land, we are still here, and that the well-being of Native people means the well-being of all people on this land. So how does some of this relate to transportation? So I just want to start uh, with driving while Indian. Analysis of data found that nearly one-third of all high discretion searches of Native people by the Washington State Patrol happened where U.S. Highway 97 entered the Colville and Yakima reservations. I myself have been stopped by police who were waiting at the borders of our lands, and I can tell you how scary that is. 
you know, some of these tribal borders are rural and without telecommunications access. So it can mean that these police encounters are much less likely to be live streamed or help provided than in situations in an urban area or with better telecommunications infrastructure. So tribal sovereignty also plays a crucial role in the policing of native people. In the current Supreme Court case, U.S. v. Cooley, the courts will decide if tribal police have the right to detain and arrest non-natives on our tribal lands. So while I'm adamantly anti-cop, I believe in the inherent sovereign right for native nations to rule over our lands as we see fit, and that's why crushing colonialism signed onto an amicus brief for this case. Furthermore, if we're still subjected to the colonizer's criminal injustice system, then why isn't we aren't allowed to keep our community safe with our police and court systems or with our own traditional forms of justice? Why is it that so many of our lands are without adequate roads, bridges, transportation, and other services, but the U.S. government and the corporatocracy can build pipelines, dams, mines, and other infrastructure near or on our lands without our consent? Why is it the police believe they have the right to harass and abuse and murder and arrest our people, particularly our women, but it's okay for these infrastructure projects to bring more non-Native men to our lands who play a key role in the high rates of murder and disappearance? 96% of the rapes of Native women on our recognized lands are committed by non-Native men, most of whom are white. Many of our people have to hitchhike due to poverty and a lack of transportation, which increases the likelihood of being kidnapped and trafficked, assaulted and murdered by one of these men or by police officers. You know, the answer to the questions I ask is always genocide. That is the answer. You know, the so-called U.S. has never stopped trying to eradicate the, quote, Indian problem and policing and a lack of safe transportation are part of this plan to finally kill us all off. So with that, I'm gonna end here and pass it along. Uh, so Wado, thank you.